Welcome to Iberia, this is Wolf and today we're traveling to the Parthian Empire. It's the year 53 BC and Crassus has crossed the Euphrates River in the hopes of achieving more than Alexander had centuries earlier. His goal is to conquer the Parthian Empire, India and perhaps even reach China. However, the Parthians have been busy preparing for the Roman invasion and sent Serena, a prominent Parthian noble, to halt their advance. With a force of just 10,000 horsemen, Serena is meeting the 42,000 invading Romans at Karai. In 54 BC, the first major conflict between Rome and Parthia started. Crassus has been appointed governor of Syria and allowed to raise seven legions with the power to sue for peace or war against foreign powers. This is a part of the first triumvirate arrangements between Caesar, Pompey and Crassus. However, Crassus is the only part of the first triumvirate without any military honors, which puts him below his counterparts and at the age of 62 he is in a hurry to do so. The Parthian Empire has been under civil strife for decades and other eastern empires like the Pontic or Armenian empires had been relatively easy to defeat, so with his seven legions and ambitions set on being the greatest military leader Rome had ever seen so far, the choice was obvious, Parthian Mesopotamia would become Roman lands. In 54 BC he crossed the Euphrates for the first time, skirmishing with local forces successfully and turning some Greek towns to the Roman side, returning to the Roman territory in the winter having made some very good gains. In 53 BC, Crassus was asked by the Armenian king, a Roman ally, to cross into Parthian lands through Armenia. Additionally, he would aid the Romans with 30,000 infantry and 16,000 horsemen. Crassus denied the request and joined by his son Publius, a prominent cavalry commander that had served under Caesar, he crossed the Euphrates once again, wanting to make way into the heart of Mesopotamia quickly. Near the town of Karai, the Roman advance was halted. Serena and his men appeared on the horizon, 9,000 lightly armored horse archers and a contingent of 1,000 heavily armored cataphracts. The Romans would deploy in a typical Roman fashion with infantry in the center and cavalry on the flanks. However, seeing that the enemy was made up entirely of cavalry, Crassus ordered the men to form a hollow square, a formation that would allow the Romans to defend from all sides. It's important to note just how alien the Parthian army was to the Romans. The Romans were masters of close quarters combat, but the Parthians, mostly ranged army, denied this to the Romans. At first, the Parthians tried to intimidate the Romans. They used loud drums, they covered the cataphracts armor only to run up to the Romans and then cover their, ch their shining armor. They feigned charges, but the Romans held their lines. Serena had predicted this, as the Parthians had encountered disciplined armies before, and so the battle commenced. Serena ordered his horse archers to encircle the square, and once encircled, to rain arrows on it. Parthian barbed arrows and compound bows were particularly effective, however, historians are not in agreement whether they were consistently lethal or just mostly inflicting non-lethal wounds on the Romans. Some historians describe the arrows partially penetrating the Roman shields and nailing the shields to the limbs of the Roman infantry and nailing their feet to the ground, other historians just state that most wounds inflicted were non-fatal hits to exposed limbs. The Roman skirmishers tried to break the encirclement skirmishing with the horse archers, but the Parthians could just ride away and keep shooting, they used what came to be called the Parthian shot. The men would simply turn 180 degrees on their horses and shoot backwards while riding away. The Romans would be repelled and the legionaries came under arrow fire once again. Crassus then ordered his legionaries to form the famous Roman Testudo until the Parthians ran out of ammo. But once again, Serena accounted for this and had a massive baggage train of camels, each burdened with hundreds or even thousands of arrows that ran back and forth behind the horse archers resupplying them. The Roman situation was dire and as Crassus realized that the arrow showers wasn't ending anytime soon, he ordered his son Publius to sally out of the square with his cavalry and break the encirclement. Publius rode out to meet the Parthians, but once again they just ran away, and once again using the Parthian shot to inflict casualties as they ran. However, this was not the only Parthian strategy, they were luring Publius into a trap. Soon the cataphracts intercepted Publius, his lighter and poorly armored cavalry stood no chance against the cataphracts, and soon the horse archers started shooting volleys from Publius' back. The Roman sallying force was cut down, Publius was severely wounded and to not be captured by the Parthians he asked his 
his armor bearer to end his own life. Crassus ordered the square forward to rush in the aid of his son. Little did he know that his son was already dead. Not long after, the Parthians returned from the engagement with Publius's severed head. Upon seeing this, Crassus shut down. The Romans endured the arrow shower into pseudo formation, the cataphracts charged the Romans, and when the Roman formation loosened up to fight off the cavalry, the cataphracts just retreated and the arrows restarted raining again. The morale on the Roman side plummeted. Many were dead, many were wounded, all seemed lost, but then came dusk and the Parthians finally retreated. Crassus was still in full disarray, not even addressing the men. Two high-ranking officials took charge and ordered the army to move into the town of Karai. They left behind those two wounded to walk. During their walk, many got lost in the desert, other wounded men got left behind, but they made it to Karai. When the Parthian army got to Karai, they lured Crassus into a meeting where Crassus was killed thus ending the Battle of Karai. Regarding the Roman defeat, I think it's important to mention Serena's skill, judgment and tactics, but also Crassus's lack of military experience. Crassus wasn't a military commander and his only military success had been defeating Spartacus' rebellion in the Third Servile War over 20 years earlier in 71 BC. Having Crassus killed tipped the political balance in Rome. Caesar and Pompey would now compete for power and this would eventually lead to the crossing of the Rubicon and finally Caesar becoming the dictator and later Augustus becoming emperor. Serena was assassinated at the request of the Parthian king as the astonishing victory at Karai that honestly no one was expecting made him even more popular. This would be the first time the Roman war machine would face off against the cavalry archer army, a highly mobile and effective force. Their encirclement tactics together with the Parthian shot and the flat terrain are extremely hard to fight, especially for the melee specialized Romans. Combined with a large supply of arrows, the Parthians could outshoot any challenge under those circumstances. They went on to conquer Syria as Rome was too busy with internal strife, though they didn't really keep it for long. Thank you for watching and consider subscribing since these videos take a ton of time to make. So if you enjoy these, do make sure to subscribe, like and leave a comment to appease the gods of the algorithm. And thank you for watching again, you lovely people, and I'll see you all on the next one.